deal with aggressive or drunk passengers. But for Southampton cabbie Derek Fletcher, what seemed like an ordinary fare turned out to be his last. He was strangled and then set on fire. I can't put into words how bad this attack was. I woke up to find that my left leg was on fire. He left him for dead. He set him alight and ran off. <laughs> well, you try this one. Go on. On the side of a rich Greek mountain is the archaeological site of Delphi. Uh, Stoke on Trent. Go on, take it seriously. <laughs> I didn't know they had any mountains in Greece, only pictures. Yeah. Being a Sunday night, it's not one of our busiest yeah. nights, particularly. Just sat in the office with my boss, Richard. I uh, just waiting for calls to come in, really. Yeah, there wasn't much of the telly at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Happy cabs. Yeah, I want, I want a car to a Stoneham Lane. Um, yes, mate. I'm in Chestnut Avenue. And what time do you want it? Now. About Ten minutes. Derek can't earn money unless he gets booked. So I said to him, go on, Derek, go and earn yourself some money. majority of the people that we have as regular customers are just nice down to earth people and appreciate that what we're doing for them. He was actually on the junction of Chestnut Avenue and Southampton Road. There's a call box on the corner. Stoneham Lane, mate! Yeah! The weird thing was when he first got in, I had this really odd feeling I don't know what it was, just a strange, shivery feeling. Just the first time I've ever felt like that when anybody's got in the car. Just really, really strange. Oh. Do you mind pulling over, mate? I'm, I'm going to think I'm going to be sick. Get on. Don't be sick in the cab, whatever you do. Before I could continue the journey, he'd thrown this rope over my head and proceeded to strangle me. <laughs> I, I just couldn't stop him doing anything. And I thought, you know, this is it, I'm, I'm a Connor, really. went back to the car because I remember some water in the boot which I used to just cool my legs. <laughs> and then I radio through to explain that I've been attacked and where I was. I've been attacked and set on fire. <laughs> I'm halfway down Stoneham Lane. I got a call from Derek in a very faint voice telling me that he'd been attacked. I uh, told him that I'd be there in a minute. Police emergency. Just had a radio message saying that one of my drivers has been attacked. I'm on my way there now. Yeah. I don't know what condition he's in, but he sounds very, very bad on the radio. By the time I'd actually finished phone call, I was actually there. I then noticed all the burns on his legs. Um, disgusting. It, 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 it's just complete um, blisters. 
I mean, right the way across his legs, and his arms were red raw. Derek sustained full thickness burns on his left leg uh, and his right leg. This means that the tissue is damaged from the level of the skin all the way through the fat down to about the level of his muscles. When they first removed the bandages, it came as a heck of a shock uh, to see the actual state of my legs. They had to scrape away all the burnt tissue. It just looked horrendous, really. Uh, it's the first time I've ever been that badly injured that I, you know, made me feel sick, really. The hospital staff have explained that the chances are there will be some permanent scarring of the legs, just simply because of the nature of the, the depth of the burns. Derek's a very emotional chap. And when I told him that all the customers had been asking about him, um, wished him well, and we got a bit emotional together, really. It's not nice to see such a nice person be attacked and abused and treated the way he was. This was cruel.